Hey, hi there, Libra. Welcome to my weekly predictive reading for March 2020. Cross-watcher energies are interchangeable, and please only take those portions that resonate with you. Okay, Libra, off camera to save time, I've performed a protective blessing. I've meditated over and shuffled these cards just for you. And we will be using an oracle card from the deck, Ask Your Guides, by Sonia Choquette. Your first card, it's the general atmosphere. It's the background and the basis of the matter. The King of Pentacles, Taurus. Earth Energy, Taurus. This is Libra's reading. Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Jupiter, Mercury. Now this represents security. The bull's head is a symbol of Taurus. This is an investor who will profit from you sometime in the future, or it could be you. Could have Earth in your chart. This indicates kindness to others. This person is materially oriented. They have a lot of ambition. Could be you or someone around you that aspires to great wealth. Could be a father or a boss or a man that loves money and riches and they're happy to collect as much as possible. They're slow moving, they're noble and sophisticated. They're very clever in business matters like a financial wizard. This is something tangible that's completing. It's the fulfillment of the desires and the power to manifest. Your second card, and this is the energy that's crossing over your path. These are your subconscious influences. It's not focusing very well. Number three of the Major Arcana in the Rider Waite deck, the Empress. This card is ruled by Venus, which this could be you, Libra as well as Taurus. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus, Jupiter, Mars, Saturn. Now this is material abundance. It's fertility and fruitfulness, someone nurturing. This represents the productive generative activities in the subconscious versus the high priestess, like in a virgin state of the subconscious. Then it's been impregnated by seed ideas. The subconscious has control over all steps of development. This is the multiplicator of images, and an omen for success, a symbol of hope, and a very, very positive, powerful energy. The material wealth, it can be marriage, it's fertility for would-be parents, farmers, or people in creative arts. It's love through compassion and nurturing, and an opening to pleasure. It's beauty and abundance, and passion and sensual involvement with the world. It's a time of passion and of sexual desire and enjoyment of life. This can be someone nurturing, showing a motherly concern for another. There's a natural growth here. This is the feminine authority card. In the same way, the emperor is the masculine authority card. They have the right to rule. And this is someone that questions none of the decisions they make. It's the wisdom of a woman gained through worldly experiences and powerful creative energies at hand. There is self-discipline and self-control within you. This can be the birth of a new idea or a creative project or even a child. There's both financial and emotional support. The King of Pentacles with the Empress can represent great riches. It's success in home and career. Your third card, is, this are the external influences that you are aware of. The Nine of Wands, Libra. Fire energy, someone's moon in Sagittarius. This person is defensive, they're protective, they're leery, they have strength and determination. They're solitary and suspicious. They may be feeling tired because they've had to persevere. This is strength to overcome trouble. It's the end of a cycle. There's strength in waiting and victory through courage and endurance. And now this is the pause in the struggle. There is preparedness and strength and reserve, and there is eventual victory, but steady force must be applied. This is through effort and determination you've protected what's yours, and you've shown courage under fire and stood your ground. This is a card of recovery, and now you're in a strong position, and success is at hand. The King of Pentacles with the Nine of Wands represents protecting your money. Your fourth card, it's the position of the future. It's the outcome and the results. Number 12 of the Major Arcana, The Hanged Man. This card is ruled by Neptune, which could make you dealing with a Pisces, 
or Pisces could be in your chart somewhere as well as someone else's. This has to do with a sacred pursuit. There's attachment and a new perspective and a sacrifice and a suspension. It's self-surrender to higher wisdom. It's surrendering to what is. It's self-surrender that leads to the transformation of the personality. This is a pause in someone's life. Suspended decisions. It's material temptation being conquered. It's a unique point of view. A sacrifice for a greater good. It's control by letting go of, and we win by surrender. This is being suspended between the past and the future. A new direction in your life is in the making and readjustment is needed, but there's no hurry. Hangman always slows reading up a little. You might want to stop doing things that may harm you. It's do not let others tell you how to think or what to say. And do not let public opinion sway you. This is a voluntary giving up of something in order to get something of greater value. It brings in a time of greater understanding. Your person, your life, is just simply suspended for a time in order to recognize what needs to be changed in the personality in order to embody more light. That's what the nimbus around the man's head represents. It's new insight, awareness, and enlightenment. It's a, a releasing of a mindset that is no longer useful. You could be incubating a great realization. King of Pentacles with the Hanged Man is a redundancy, someone not feeling useful. Your fifth card, it's the bottom of the deck card, the underlying issue. This is what's unseen. Number eight of the major arcana, or not major, this is a minor arcana card, the eight of swords, air energy, feeling bondage and restrictions. These are mind force manacles, prisons, prisons of doubts. It's bondage, limiting beliefs, a temporary durance. It's a fear to move out of a situation. It's you being your own worst enemy because it's you that can change matters. This is feeling trapped, maybe making some excuses, using victim mentality. You'll need to use courage to think in a new way and cast off bonds and obligations. And in this situation at hand, Unless you change habitual behavior, you'll not get any further. And when you dwell on the wrong thoughts and ideas, it will bind you from moving forward. These restrictions are self-imposed because of fear and indecision, but a sign will come to show the way. There are problems to overcome and decisions to make, and you will not remain stuck. You're feeling like you're trapped with no way out, but there is a solution to every problem. This is remembering that real freedom comes from inside your own spirit. This can be someone that dislikes their work, but they do it anyway. It's having self-doubt and being confused about what to do, but afraid to make the wrong decision. You're not seeing clearly. Those blindfolds can block you from seeing the obvious. The Eight of Pentacles with the Eight of Swords is restricting yourself from spending. The Empress with the Nine of Wands is a woman who is defensive or leery. There could be because you're on the verge of a masterpiece. The Empress with the Hanged Man is stability and reflection, material and spiritual growth. She may have to wait and have patience. The Empress with the Eight of Swords is a woman who feels helpless and disempowered. The Nine of Wands with the Hanged Man is resilience and sacrifice. The Nine of Wands with the Eight of Swords is the effort to free yourself. It's restraining yourself. The hanged man with the eight of swords is trapped in your thoughts. Being overly introspective can bind you. Here's your advice from the Oracle deck. Ask your guides by Sonia Choquette. Card number 28, Restriction, from your joy guides. And the eight of swords and restriction, that looks pretty synchronistic to me. Has to do with assumptions, rigidity, limitations, and prejudice. Your joy guides are tapping at your mind's door, hoping to open it and free you from the, the corner. Any narrow or presumptuous thinking on your part may be unwittingly backing you into. If you fall into the trap of running on too many assumptions or operating on unexamined preconceived notions, you quickly eliminate all your options, leading you to a damned if I do or a damned if I don't cycle of frustration. 
Your joy guides playfully remind you to step back and notice where your stuck perceptions might be attracting such frustration. They remind you that you're not stuck, but your thinking may be. Stop your mental movie and make a commercial break. It's time for a fresh look and a new viewpoint on all things. The best way to achieve this is to retreat yourself to a heavy dose of humor and let it break through your unbearable dilemma. Your joy guide's counsel is, as always, the situation may be critical, but it's not serious. Join them in reviewing the situation and laugh your way forward. Thanks, you guys. Libra, I hope you stay tuned in and keep me a, or give me a comment or a thumbs up, and please subscribe. Now remember, what goes around comes around, so I'm sending you out love and light and blessings. Thanks for watching.